This is Filtering Data Collections with NASA Earth Data Search. Today, we are supporting users like you on your journey with NASA Earth Data. Maybe you've heard of NASA Earth Data Search, but thought that it's too complex for data users like you, who are not experts in remote sensing. Not true. While NASA Earth Data Search provides many options for data access, there are resources that can help users of all kinds and skill levels find the data you need. We will begin to explore NASA Earth Data Search's collections to find data related to our domains of interest, and then narrow down to filter our search results by popular attributes. This step is essential for users who want to keep from downloading data that do not meet your needs, find useful data that you may not even be aware of that exists related to your research, streamline search results, and save more time for research, NASA holds an immense amount of data in Earth and environmental sciences. Filtering allows users to streamline your search results from thousands of data sets to a manageable list that meet your specific requirement. Without filtering, users may be overwhelmed by irrelevant results. In this tutorial, I will model for you how we narrow down the data archive to get closer to the data we need. Together, we will filter by features for data preferences, keywords, platforms, organizations, projects, processing levels, data formats, horizontal data resolution, also known as spatial resolution, and data latency. For today's session, you will need your Earth Data login. If you do not have one, see the video linked in the description. All right, let's jump in. Our journey begins with NASA Earth Data Search. Let's navigate to the Earth Data Search website shown here. Anyone can look through our data collection without signing in. However, if you want to actually download or access these data, you need to sign in first. Let's stop there first at the login at the top right. If you wish to explore data related to a particular theme or research area, you may use the search bar to search for data collections by topic. As you type, suggestions for matching topics and keywords will be displayed. This is a great strategy if you're familiar with the naming conventions that NASA uses to identify specific data collections you're looking for. For newcomers to NASA Earth Science, here's something helpful to know. Professionals often use special terms that might not match standard terms in domain-specific databases. It's like how a plumber, electrician, and an architect might all use different terms to describe the same parts of a house. Perhaps for a more scientific example, what a meteorologist calls a supercell thunderstorm, a local weather report may call a severe storm, and a database may catalog as an extreme precipitation event. This difference in terminology may make it tricky to find information in a search query. In this case, it may be best to skip the search bar altogether and head for the filtering tools. Follow along with me as we drill down with a more structured approach. Let's head to the Filter Collection section. It's helpful to consider your preferences of the features of data you wish to access early in your search. Under Filter Collections, NASA Earth Data Search guides us to think about these features. These are options that can help us limit the data collections right out of the gate. Do you wish to analyze your data using cloud computing? If so, you'll want to check this box if you're able to utilize Amazon Web Services Compute Resources. Or maybe you wish to customize your data right here in Earth Data Search. Using this feature, you can filter the results to find only the data that are customizable. This means that they have NASA tools and services built in that allow you to subset or transform the data right here in Earth Data Search before you even download them. Or do you wish to view map imagery of the data before downloading the data? By selecting this filter, you can access only the collections that have sample map imagery associated with them. Next, let's move below to explore additional facets of the filtering system. Here you can refine your search through categories like keywords, platforms, instruments, and much more. Let's explore the keyword facet. Notice the different spheres of the Earth system are represented. Let's select atmosphere, going back to the example we used earlier of severe storms. Notice there are thousands of data collections tagged with this keyword. 
atmosphere is further divided into the following categories to help users find what they need. Let's select weather events and continue to drill down to see what data we can find related to severe weather. Here we have stability and severe weather indices. I see that this data collection dates back to 2017 and is ongoing. Unfortunately, data in this collection are not yet available in the cloud, neither are they customizable in Earth Data Search, and they do not have map imagery available yet. Upon further investigation, I can see from selecting this eye icon for more information that these data are available for parts of Asia. Let's refer back to our previous example in the search bar when we searched for supercell thunderstorms, severe storms, and extreme precipitation events. The keywords in Earth Data Search are carefully controlled through a hierarchical vocabulary system that describes Earth science data, services, variables, and more, known as the Global Change Master Directory, also known as GCMD. So what if you do not see keywords that you are familiar with? If you do not find keywords that you anticipate, visit the GCMD Keyword Viewer. This Keyword Viewer is a graphical user interface that helps users like you navigate the GCMD Keyword Hierarchy to find keywords that you need. If you have questions about GCMD Keywords, check out the GCMD Keyword Forum. It provides keyword users and metadata providers with an area to ask questions, submit keyword requests, and much more. You can find this and other links in the video description. You can also explore existing questions, answers, and post new questions if they do not exist yet. NASA subject matter experts are there to help you within 48 business hours. You will need your Earth Data login handy to post new questions on the forum. Next, let's head to platforms. This term refers to the vehicle or structure that carries remote sensing instruments used to collect data about the Earth without making physical contact. NASA makes observations of Earth from many diverse observational platforms, such as air-based platforms like aircraft, balloon, and unmanned aircraft systems, land-based platforms like weather stations, rovers, Doppler radar, and more space-based platforms like our major satellite missions, as well as the International Space Station and geostationary satellites, water-based platforms like buoys, fixed ocean platforms, and research vessels, also known as RVs. Similar to the variety of platforms, NASA also has a diverse suite of instruments aboard these platforms. These sensors are the devices that measure the data. Earth Data Search offers a quick view of the top 50 instruments which have the most results and data available. Earth Data Search also offers a way to view all of the instruments in our collections. Visit NASA Earth Data to learn more about these instruments, the kinds of data they collect, their technologies, resolutions, and their applications of the data. Next, let's proceed to organizations. This filter includes over 10,000 data collections associated with organizations that contribute to NASA's Earth science data by serving as data provider, creator, processor, manager, or distributor, and may include universities, government agencies, and more. This includes NASA's own Distributed Active Archive Centers, or DACs, NASA centers and projects, and other U.S. government agencies, research institutions, international space agencies, and specialized data centers. As with instruments, Earth Data Search offers a quick view of the top 50 organizations or a way to view all organizations in our collections. Next, we will find projects. This facet describes field campaigns, research sites, and geographic locations where NASA Earth Science has conducted data collection activities. This element may also cover long-term projects that continuously create new data sets. And just as before, you can search the top 50 projects or all projects in our collection. Data processing levels provides an identifier for the level at which the data in the collection are processed, ranging from level zero to level four. One may think of the data processing in these general terms. Keep in mind that I'm making generalizations to help you construct a mental model of how the hierarchy works. For more details about data levels, visit our website. Level zero, you can think of this as the raw data straight from the instrument. Next is level one. Here we have the data with some basic calibrations applied. 
Following is level two. Here we have derived geophysical variables. This is an advanced way to refer to measurements that aren't directly observed by instruments, but are calculated or inferred from raw observational data through various algorithms, models, or processing techniques. This transforms raw measurements into meaningful quantities like temperature or vegetation index. Level three, this is where data are mapped into uniform space-time grids and are frequently used among GIS users. Level four, this includes model outputs or analysis results combining multiple sources. It's important to note that this hierarchy of processing levels describes the degree of processing applied to a data product. Users should consider how you plan to use the data product before you select the level. Note that there are trade-offs when using different processing levels of data. Next, you'll find data format. These file formats provided in Earth Data Search may include, but are certainly not limited to, ASCII and CSV file formats perfect for storing, say, weather data, or GeoTIFF file formats for mapping Earth's surface, and HDF or NetCDF well-suited for storing satellite data. But what if you're not an expert in using these file formats and are not familiar with them? No problem, we have resources for you. To learn more about commonly used formats for Earth observation data, visit our Data Formats page. If the data collection you're interested in is not provided in a format that you're familiar with, do not worry, as there are several services and tools that enable you to change the format of the data or transform them from one format to another. Let's explore the tiling system filter. Think of tiling systems like cutting a world map into smaller, manageable pieces like a cake. When scientists collect data from satellites or other sources, there's an enormous amount of information covering the entire planet. By dividing Earth's surface into a grid of smaller sections called tiles, it becomes much easier to store massive amounts of data, find specific information about a particular area, share only the pieces someone needs, and process information more quickly on computers. It's similar to how your common phone app used for mapping might download just the section of the map you need rather than for the entire world. Some common ways of dividing the Earth include military grid reference systems or MGRS, coordinate-based grids like Universal Transverse Mercator or UTM, or special tile patterns designed specifically for certain satellites or projects like for Calypso, Miser, or MODIS. Next, you will find horizontal data resolution, better known as spatial resolution. Horizontal data resolution is like the zoom level on a digital map. It tells you how detailed the map is by measuring the smallest distance between two separate points of data. Next, you will find data latency. This is simply how long it takes for data to get from the instrument to you, the user. Think of data latency as a delivery time. When an instrument collects information about the Earth, the raw data must be downloaded from the satellite. It then needs to be processed and sometimes extensively. Data quality checks must be performed, and the data is formatted and uploaded to systems where then you can access it. For more information on data latency, visit our website. Where will your research data journey take you next? I'll see you in the next video in the series to continue our exploration of NASA Earth Data Search. See you there.